This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Oh yes, I'm back. At probably the most frequently visited location on the channel, the infamous Summit Inn. I mean, I truly, I cannot believe it. Another deadbeat car left here for the winter. Every year since 2020, there has been some sort of car left for dead here in the Summit Inn parking lot. Every time I go out east, I gotta stop here and just see if the tradition lives on and unbelievably, it has yet again. So, gonna grab a photo of it. Not gonna spend too much time here because I have photographed this place in its entirety, but I gotta add this new Lexus to the Summit Inn Graveyard Collection. All right, spotted one more thing while I was pulling out of the parking lot. This uh, semi truck's got a bunch of, funny enough, demolished cars on it and uh, I think that adds to the Summit Inn Graveyard series quite nicely. I threw the 105 on and it looks like this is gonna be a much better composition. I'm venturing down one of my favorite highways out in Eastern Washington, Highway 10, connects uh, Clee Ellum to Ellensburg. And I stopped off to photograph this frozen pond it looks pretty cool. Well, it did look pretty cool in sunlight. And then of course, as I'm fiddling around doing video stuff, a cloud comes in front of the sun and uh, now we got a bunch of dead light. So just patiently waiting for the sun to poke out from behind the cloud. And I'm gonna snag this photo. It's crazy what a difference waiting a few minutes for the right light can make. It's legitimately borderline unhealthy how much I love rivers. The dream, little house, buy a river one day. Okay, I did find this kind of weird composition that I'm gonna try. It's of the bridge and the river, portrait orientation. I wanna do a longer exposure just to smooth out the ripples in the water and I realized I forgot my uh, step up rings so that I could put my 82 mil uh, ND filter on my 77 mil lens. But I remembered I brought this K2 kit from Freewell that's got all the uh, step up rings built into it. So I'm going to try to make use of this thing. So it's kind of nice. Right now I got a 72 millimeter step up ring in there. And then if you want to switch it out, just unscrew this, pinch these together. And that just kind of plops out like that. And now I'll just grab my 72 millimeter ring, stick it in there, lock it up. And now this full filter kit is ready to slap on my 77 mil diameter lens. Uh, yeah, let's throw this six to nine stop ND on. There we go. So now I got six to nine stops of ND on, which will be perfect for this longer exposure I'm about to take. Okay, nine stops of ND, F16, four second exposure. I threw the Pentax into spot metering mode. I checked down by the river, it was saying about 1 30th of a second, and I checked up in the sky, it was saying about 1 1 80th of a second. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to try the split ND filter uh, for the first time. I've been wanting to use it, but every instance that I've needed to use it, I've had the Mamiya 7 II with me, uh, which you can use split NDs on a rangefinder, but you gotta do some prep work beforehand and I just haven't gotten around to doing that. But obviously with a SLR, 
it's real easy to use the split ND because you can ex you can see through the lens exactly where the split is lining up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just try it for this frame and uh, see what kind of results we get and compare it to the first image that I took as well. So essentially it'll be six stops of ND down in the foreground and then a total of nine stops of ND up in the sky. Now obviously with this amount of ND, you really can't see anything through the lens. So I'm just gonna pop the six to nine stop off really quick and line up my split ND. I don't know. It'd be nice to get these results and just compare them and kind of see how this split ND affects the image. Well, the split ND is doing pretty much exactly what you'd expect it to do. It's keeping the exposure in the sky pretty much the same while allowing more light to pour into the bottom half of the frame and brighten up those shadows under the bridge and increase the exposure in the water as well. I actually kind of like the tonality of the first image. I like the deeper shadows and I like that kind of more turquoise color we're getting in the water. And you can see there's actually a little bit of a color shift up in the clouds when using the split ND. They're a little bit warmer compared to the image on the left without the split ND. So that's something to note as well. Um, but the, there was a little cloud that came over the sun in that second image. So that is diffusing some of the light. You can see there's less contrast on the bridge itself and that plant off to the right isn't lit up as much we're not getting those red colors and that's like I said because there was a bit of diffusion over the sun but overall I mean the ND is definitely definitely doing its job I think I just actually prefer the image without the split ND on this particular frame okay I'm going for a wider shot of the river now and it's another opportunity to utilize this split ND I don't have an original image without the split ND to compare this photo to, but as you can see, the split ND is very, very obvious. It's being pretty obtrusive up there in the top right corner of the frame. And something that I knew that was gonna happen when I shot this photo is that the split ND was gonna darken the tops of those trees because I had an obstructed skyline. I think the split NDs are best suited for unobstructed skylines that are pretty even, which wasn't the case for this photo and knowing how flexible film is when it's overexposed, I think I would have rather have just shot this without the split ND and pulled those highlights back in post because they were only, I think, three stops overexposed, which for Portra 400 isn't a big deal at all. I'm just not a fan of those dark uh, tops of the trees in this photo. I think it's really distracting, and I think the photo overall looks pretty unrealistic just because of how deep that top right corner of this frame how deep those colors are so I'll be honest the light right now is certainly nothing to write home about but I like this composition with the windmills in the background 105 is on shot behind me that looks pretty sweet I think got a uh, windmill that's kind of nestled up in this valley okay and then I'm gonna get one more with the river in it hopefully I love Eastern Washington good old walk down the side of the road Two slightly different angles. This one I had two people coming across the bridge, just about to cross the bridge, uh, walking up there, so that's kind of cool, but I don't know, we'll see. 
Well, I'm always a sucker for a good old casino, and this looks like the dinkiest little place I've ever seen, so I definitely had to stop off and grab a photo of it. Also, I'm very aware that this hat, in combination with my uncared for facial hair, makes it look like I may or may not have been involved with a certain event that took place three years ago on the sixth day of the first month of the year. I'm getting it trimmed up soon, but uh, I was re-watching some video footage today, and uh, <laughs> I'm looking rough. I'm looking on Google Maps and it says this place opens in two hours. I thought it was like a rundown closed for good casino. No. This joint's fully operational apparently. I might warrant a uh, in-person investigation. <laughs> I was planning on slowly making my way back to the west side, but old Bray might be sticking around a little longer. The wild goose might have my name written all over it. At this old burger joint, I've driven past this building a few times. I've wanted to take a photo of it, but never did. If I remember correctly, the last time I was rolling through here, this place was open. It was popping. And now it doesn't look like it's that anymore. Roll number two, down the hatch. Ah yes, another opportunity to satisfy my river fetish. <laughs> All right, we got four seconds, F11, Ektar 100, six stop, ND on. I'm going no split ND on this one. <laughs> I was going to about three minutes ago, but the light evened out quite a bit. Well, I'm glad the light ended up evening out for this photo and I didn't have to use the split ND because that would have darkened the tips of the trees like it did in that earlier photo. And that just would have irked me. So pretty happy with the even exposure from this image. The water rendered really nicely as well. That kind of whirlpool effect in the bottom right hand corner is pretty sweet. Definitely draws your eyes right to that part of the frame. And yeah, the colors are nice. Pretty happy with this photo and didn't have to use the split ND. And I am just gonna not fall in the river here. And go and see if there's another sneaky photo to get. I'm pretty certain the first frame is going to be quite a bit stronger than this one, but I'm still going to give it a go. Pretty sweet, just drove to the end of a dead end road, there's a little parking lot with this river access, so I'm digging it, and uh, hopefully the camera does too. I put Ektar 100 in, not expecting to use the NDs that much the rest of the day. And of course, I uh, stumble across a few more scenes where I want to smooth out the running water of the rivers. So I'm plopping this two to five on now. It'll be three stops of ND, F11, four seconds. There have been some planes doing touch and goes at this airstrip that's right next to me. I got a shot of one coming over somebody's kind of farmland. I'd love to get a shot of one coming into land. And here's one right now, actually. Nice, that worked out well. And now, 
It's time to see what the Wild Goose Casino in Ellensburg, Washington is all about. Upon approach, I'm skeptical of this establishment. What kind of clientele are we going to be dealing with in here? Will the bartender be conscious? And how much of this video's zero dollar budget am I willing to risk for the sake of getting an authentic experience at the Wild Goose Casino? The original plan was table games, but they were whack-ass, never-before-seen table games that I wasn't down to mess with. So pull tabs it was. And oh, what a call. Five hundred big ones. Oh, you've got to be kidding me! Quick hit and run at the Lucky Goose Casino outside of Ellensburg. Milked them for all they're worth. Five hundred dollar jackpot on a pull tab. I was this close to not stopping at this place. Earlier today, when I came by. I was, you know, oh yeah, I'll pop back in later, do, do a little iPhone footage for the, for the video. I was driving, driving by here, I was like, there's no way I'm stopping. I went past this place and then something inside my head, I, I go, no, it is my duty to report to the people what the Lucky Goose is like. So I flipped a Yui, came back, parked, walk in there, was going to play blackjack, but they didn't have blackjack, so I said, screw it. Give me twenty dollars in pull tabs e equals MC squared. One time for Einstein, baby. I mean, <laughs> can you believe it? And the best part is, I'm gonna spend this on thirty rolls of Portra. Oh man, I live my life. I got four frames left on this roll of Ektar, and the light is just so dead. Cloud coverage is rolling in. Not really gonna get any sort of sunset action here, unfortunately. So, yeah, I'd like to, you know, finish these frames off. I'm going to see if I can spot something on the way home. Um, but yeah, wow. The Lucky Goose Casino in Ellensburg. Delivering. This might have to be a mandatory stop every time I'm out east, baby. $3.50 Coors Light too. Oh, Lord. It's a good day to be a gambler. All right. Well, the truth is it's really cold, really windy, and I just want to go home. So I'm gonna be a little lazy with these last four frames. I'm gonna shoot them all right here in this location, uh, which is just outside the Red Sky Orchards. Or I guess it's at the Red Sky Orchards. Uh, there's a couple cool things I think I can photograph here. So I'm just gonna fire these off and head home where it's warm. The sky's actually really beautiful color right now. Kind of getting into that blue hour a little bit. Shooting down this road, it looks kind of cool. I'm gonna get some motion blur with these cars on the side, but I think it actually might be kind of cool. One fourth of a second F11. All right, next up, this old Ford truck with all these windmills in the background is kind of cool. All right, now last shot is gonna be trucks from the side with the Red Sky Orchard sign in the background. And there we go. <laughs> All right, that's gonna wrap up the first Eastern Washington excursion of the year. And I'm reminded yet again why I love it out here so much. The light today wasn't that great, pretty flat and dull, but overall I, you know, still had a fun time. I don't think the photos are gonna be all that good. Uh, these last few that I shot actually might be the winners from today, just because the sky kinda of came to play at the end here. Got some nice blue colors and tones, and uh, this is a kinda of cool subject over here, the Red Sky Orchards area. So, yeah, overall I can't complain. It was nice to uh, come back out to this part of the state. Just love it out here. It's a uh, very Americana, very Wild West feeling. And uh, I just love kind of that American frontier feel. I love to photograph it and hopefully convey that feeling in the images. So yeah, I plan to continue to do it for as long as I can. And uh, yeah, nice peaceful evening out here. Great day, I'm $500 richer, so can't complain. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.
Squarespace is the best in the business when it comes to building a new website. Whether you're a photographer, artist, musician, or starting a new business, Squarespace has all the tools you need to get a professional website up and running. I recently hosted an entire online photography gallery that featured 100 photographers from around the world on my personal website, and that's all thanks to Squarespace. The website building interface is extremely intuitive and absolutely zero coding is necessary. They have a ton of fantastic templates to choose from, and from there you can begin to further customize the look and feel of your site to make it unique to you. On top of that, they have great e-commerce tools that let you keep track of orders, inventory, customers, offer memberships, and more. And with fantastic customer service, you're always in the clear if you ever need help along the way. If you'd like to receive 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain, head over to squarespace.com bray or use code bray at checkout to do so.